I'm Sarah Storelli, on a quest to discover the people behind the cutting edge innovations across industries, to tell the stories that define them far more than their titles. My guest today is John Davies. Hi, John. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Really appreciate it. Hey, Sarah. Thanks so much for asking me. It's great to be here. Well, let's dive in, shall we? So first question is really, how has your culture you know, really shaped or defined you professionally as well as personally? Yeah, that, it's a great question. I come from a place in the northwest of the UK. Um, most people, the biggest place that I've heard of would be Manchester. And the culture there that you grow up is it's very working class. It's about hard work, authenticity. Um, it's based upon mining and ind industry, mills, manufacturing, all those kind of industries. But actually, as you go around the city of Manchester, all of the public items such as like waste bins or lampposts for lights and things like that, they all actually have an icon of the bee on it because we're worker bees. So I guess if you grow up around there, your culture is that you are a worker. Um, you pride yourself on your work ethic. So given that, I know your background is quite diverse in the sense of, you know, not only sales, but also tech. And of course, even right now, uh, you know, how you're overseeing your Latin America, Canada and the Caribbean. And so I'm curious just to hear a little bit about your journey, how you even made that transition really from having that engineering background and applying that now in your sales executive role. I was able to kind of bring the learnings from my previous engineering management career through to an IT management career. And I guess if I'm being vocally self-critical, I kind of get a bit bored if I have to then do the same thing <laughs> again and again and again. Right there so, with you. <laughs> uh, there you go, right? So what I did was I made a conscious choice to move towards uh, a sales role uh, because I could own the PL. If I can own the PL, I can actually make the decisions that have the impact that really affect the citizen, the patient, the student, the people that, you know, today we work with. So I became a BD within healthcare and defense and then uh, eventually sort of became uh, an account manager. All this time I was assessing the technology change. So I guess, you know, I was looking at Amazon Web Services. They were customer obsessed, right, is what is the term we use all the time. I'm an ex-customer. Half my career has been in the public sector and half working with the public sector. I have to know that I'm I'm delivering with the technology that I would buy if I was on the other side. I think having looked through it all, the, both the culture and the technology were just way ahead for me. So I made the decision to come over here. One of the things that, that definitely happened is, is rapid growth. And we scaled the teams very quickly. We got a policy for healthcare in 2018. Um, that enabled us to really go deep. Uh, I looked after our UK healthcare business and created a scalable model. Uh, which we produced a business case for, a, as you know, a six-pager in Amazon. <laughs> uh, that went before our leadership right to the very top, and they agreed to fund us to scale us to another 18 countries, including Canada. Amazing. People will be at hear it in my accent. I'm from the north of England, right? It's a working-class culture. I didn't, uh, I've, I've studied many things since, but at, at school age, I never went on to university or anything like that. It would have been preposterous, maybe one in every thousand kids from where I was from got to go to university in those days, obviously more in the modern world, but it didn't matter at AWS. It's a meritocracy. What mattered is that you worked hard, you were, you were insurgent, you were innovative, you were prepared to back your idea and own it. And I think to me, you know, to someone who comes from my background, it's like there's nothing better, right? You know, you can take the risk, but you get the reward. I look after our public sector business for Latin America, Canada, and the Caribbean. Um, and, and I talk to my team now, and one of the things I would say to them, I need you to understand what a meritocracy this is. You and own your career here. It's not about what school you went to. It's not about what degree you got. It's what you can do, what you can deliver, and how you do it in the right way for the customers. I love it. So given that, what is your favorite Amazon leadership principle? I know there are many. So what, which one have you had to choose? You know what? I think it changes. The one that I pride myself on, the one that drives me, the one that I've realized is actually behind that wanting to do things for the first time, is learn and be curious. Right? You know, I am. I've realized I am fundamentally curious. And, you know, I've been with the LCC, Latin America, Canada, Caribbean team for a year now, right? And it's been the most inspiring professional year of my life because we're so young as an industry 
sharing your learning is is disproportionately important you know so it's like um being able to come you know from EMEA and then share what I've learned in EMEA with Latin America Canada and then take what I'm learning there and take that back to EMEA is just amazing things are working in some ways in Brazil in other ways in Canada or UK they're incredible so it's important to make sure we're sharing the best of that with both our teams and our customers now so in regards to I would say overall you've had an amazing career and so of course in public sector what do you think really has driven or inspired you to have a career you know working with public sector whether it's you know, directly in public sector or of course from the private sector angle do you attribute some of that to your childhood and really where you were from of that working bee or really like what drives you to go make a difference i want to feel impact um i want to feel like the work that i do makes a difference there's a really good example, you know, like back in the beginning of the pandemic, right? Um, and at the time I was looking after our international public sector healthcare business, I was able to help, you know, thousands of healthcare businesses all over the world, some directly, some indirectly. Uh, we were able to share the stories from the rest of the world, what was working and scale it, you know, I mean, we, we delivered millions upon millions of um, test kits in the UK to uh, free to, to, um, to, primary healthcare providers that, that couldn't access them at the time. We were able to really leverage cloud at scale. But when I look back and I think how much we were able to do as a team globally across AWS, I'll always look back on that, you know, and I, th and I think, you know, today now, my passion now, my mission now is that we don't miss out on the learnings. We learned a lot collectively, both ourselves and the customers, the governments, the security forces, the healthcare industries, educators, you know, everything went online, everything was remote, vaccine systems were span up in, in days, you know. <laughs> it's like, we can't let that go. Let's keep that pace. We're at a transitional moment in technology, you know, like literally day zero and generative AI. Uh, we've had, we've, you know, most public sector entities have got six to 10 years now on cloud. Let's use this, you know, let's use the, the the skills that we learn, the knowledge we have to really drive forward again. And so building on top of that, because I think, you know, it is interesting to, to see the industry and to your point, even how quickly like education, you know, just pretty much instantly had to go yeah. digital. So it's almost like how do people, though, actually maintain that momentum? Because I think we have started to see just generally, you know, of course, with you know, return to, you know, if you will, in person of how do we continue to inspire those organizations to adopt and transition to the cloud? I think that, that, you know, a big thing that's happened this year, especially with generative AI, is that, I mean, AI has been around forever. People like right. you and I have been talking about it for a decade, <laughs> right? But, um, but what happened this year was that consumers now understand it. So what we need to do is give people an understanding of what it is. So we remove the risk and the fear um, because I think, you know, there's an opportunity to get this right. That, that, yes, absolutely, we need to be responsible about the usage of it. I, I just see it as the most incredible opportunity to educate the world on the possibilities for what this can do. We have all over the world, in all industries, staffing shortages. You know, and I think, you know, we can help with this. We've got educators online now, right? So that instead of a tutor having a class of 30, they might be talking to thousands, right, at the right. same time. So what about a bit of a generative AI as a chatbot or something on the side where you can ask questions like you would to a tutor? I think the more we can help people understand AI, not just the technology of it, but how humans will interact with AI and the fact that you need a human right. within all of these aspects as well, that's how people will then start to, you know, understand use in the right way uh, and deliver scale like we just can't do today without it. Agreed. So when all is said and done, what mm. do you want to be known for to future generations? I mean, honestly, you know, from, <laughs> coming from the north of England like that, I would just say that he tried really hard and <laughs> he helped a few people along the way would be great from me. But um, I'd like to think that one, I delivered an earned trust with customers uh, when they needed me. And two, that I inspired uh, customers and my team to, to think bigger 
and take risks and not be afraid of failure. I think I'd like to be remembered or my legacy be someone who was able to move public sector technology forward in the right way. Well, that's amazing. So I just want to thank you so much, John, for joining us today and taking the time out to be here and to share your learnings of just such an inspiring career. And hopefully our readers will be able to to gleam some more insights. Thank you, Sarah. It's been great to chat with you today. Thanks. Thanks.